Hello everyone and welcome to this brief video on biopsychology lesson 4 which is plasticity and functional recovery. Plasticity refers to the ability of the brain to change and adapt its structures and processes as a result of experience and new learning. Research has actually shown that your brain is continuously creating new connections as a response to experiences that you make throughout your life. During infancy, the brain experiences a rapid growth in the number of synaptic connections it has, peaking at around 15,000 at the age of two to three years, as you can see on the screen right now. That's about twice as many as there are in an adult brain. But then as we age, the connections that we rarely use are deleted um, or become dormant, and those that are frequently used are strengthened. And that process is known as synaptic pruning. Originally, researchers also believed that that process only occurred in childhood. However, we now know that that's not the case and that your brain actually continues to prune away those connections that it doesn't need and strengthen those that it does need throughout the majority of your life. Kuhn et al. in 2014 actually did some research into plasticity um, and they compared a control group with a video game training group that were trained for two months for at least 30 minutes a day on the game Super Mario. They found a significant increase in grey matter in various areas of the brain including the cortex, the hippocampus and the cerebellum. That increase wasn't evidence in the control group that didn't play Super Mario. The researchers concluded that video game training had resulted in new synaptic connections in the brain areas involved in things like spatial navigation, strategic planning, working memory, and motor performance, all skills that were important in playing the game successfully. Okay, so that's just a bit of research there for you that you can use either in your outline or in your evaluation just to support the idea of plasticity. Okay, so moving on, we'll come to functional recovery. Now, functional recovery is actually a type of plasticity. Um, and following physical injury or other forms of trauma, such as the experience of a stroke, let's say, unaffected areas of the brain are often able to adapt and compensate for those areas that are damaged. The functional recovery that may occur in the brain after trauma is another example of neural plasticity. Healthy areas of the brain may take over the function of those areas that are damaged, destroyed, or even missing. Neuroscientists suggest that this process can occur quickly, directly after a trauma, but then slows down after several weeks or months, at which point the individual may require a little bit of rehabilitative therapy to further their recovery. And we'll come on to that a little bit later on. So the question is, what actually happens during functional recovery in the brain? So the brain is able to rewire and reorganize itself by forming new synaptic connections close to the area of damage, which is a little bit like avoiding roadworks on the way to work by finding a different route, let's say. Secondary neural pathways that would not typically be used to carry out certain functions are activated or unmasked to enable functioning to continue, often in almost the exact same way as before. And that was Deutsch in 2007. That process of activating an, uh, certain neural pathways um, is supported by various structural changes in the brain. And those include axonal sprouting, which is the growth of new nerve endings which connect to other undamaged nerve cells to form new neuronal pathways. You've also got the reformation of blood vessels, 
um, to supply those areas of the brain with blood. And then you also have the recruitment of homologous areas, similar areas on opposite sides of the brain to perform specific tasks. So an example of this would be if Broca's area were damaged on the left side of the brain, the right-sided equivalent would be recruited to carry out its functions. After a period of time, functionality may then shift back to the left side once it had fully recovered. Right, so I hope all of that has made sense. We're now going to move on and have a look at a couple of evaluation points. As usual, I have written out two in full in a peel structure so that you can see what they would look like. But obviously, there are going to be more as well in the relevant book that you are using. Um, so, you know, go ahead and look for more as well. Okay, so the first one that I'm going to show you is research supporting the impact of experience on neural connections. Um, so this is research conducted by Maguire, and she studied the brains of London taxi drivers and found that significantly more volume of grey matter was present in the posterior hippocampus of London taxi drivers when compared to a control group. Now that particular part of the brain is associated with the development of spatial and navigational skills um, and is explained by the fact that London taxi drivers need to take a very, very complex test called the knowledge, um, which involves them learning all kinds of different routes and shortcuts and landmarks within a certain radius of the center of London. Um, she also found that more experienced cab drivers had more pronounced neural connections than less experienced cab drivers. Um, so it suggests that a result of the learning experience is that the brain structure of the taxi drivers was altered, which provides support for the idea of plasticity. Furthermore, you've also got some practical applications as well, and that is the idea that the fact that we understand research or we understand processes involved in plasticity and functional recovery has allowed us to apply that knowledge practically in neuro rehabilitation. So we know through research that spontaneous recovery tends to slow down after a couple of weeks. So because of that, we've been able to develop certain types of therapy that could help to maintain improvements in functioning. So you've got things like movement therapy, electrical stimulation, that kind of thing. So although it shows that the brain does need a little bit of help to fix itself, it also shows that our research has been used to improve the treatment for people who have suffered trauma to their brain, which then, of course, also increases their chances of a disability-free recovery, which is good. Okay, so you've got two evaluation points there. Um, like I said earlier, Use your book to find any more evaluation points that you might want to use. You don't even have to use these ones, but they're just two examples of how you could construct a peel paragraph um, for this particular topic. Okay, I hope that's been useful, and thank you very much for listening.